Hello everyone, my name is Dan Lett. I'm a political columnist for the Winnipeg Free Press and I'm glad you could join me down here. I'm just outside the Free Press News Cafe. I'm getting a little fresh air. I gotta tell you, my head is spinning right now. I'm trying to figure out the mathematics of the NDP leadership campaign. And like a lot of people in the party, my head hurts from trying to figure out all the numbers. This is a mind-numbing, soul-sucking, complex process that is just, it defies the, the, the better efforts of people who are better at numbers than I am. But I'm, I'm doing the best I can to figure out exactly how someone can win this leadership vote in March. Uh, and we're starting to get a little bit of information that explains how. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'm gonna give you the basic numbers of the leadership campaign. The first thing you need to know is that the total number of delegates is really created by a number of different factors. We have total party membership. Total party membership, about 10% of that number, that adds up to about 1,300 delegates. Then we have union delegates. Uh, we expect roughly 300 union delegates. And then on top of that, there's another 200 delegates that are what they call automatic delegates, party officials, VIPs, MLAs, MPs. What does it all add up to? It adds up to 1,800 or so total delegates. What does that mean for the victor? That means that to win this leadership race, you have to have just over 900 votes from the uh, delegates uh, at the convention, and uh, that's either on the first or the second ballot. The second thing we're gonna look at as we look at leadership mathematics is we're gonna look at the strategy of the three leadership candidates running in this race. Steve Ashton, he's the most ruthless organizer in the NDP. He sells more memberships than anybody else. He's gonna concentrate his battle on winning a smaller number of ridings that have a lot of delegates at stake. So he's gonna be competing in places like Thompson, the Paw, he's gonna be competing in the Maples, Elmwood. These uh, ridings are gonna generate a lot of individual delegates. If he can win these ridings, it's gonna give him a pretty good lead on the first ballot. Then we have Teresa Oswald. Oswald's campaign strategy is almost the entire opposite of what Ashton is doing. She's actually not going to spend a lot of resources trying to win the ridings that have the most delegates at stake. She's going to try and win the most ridings in total and hope that all those little numbers add up to a solid, solid figure by the time they're all counted. Premier Greg Salinger, he has a, he's sort of fighting in between these two strategies. He is going to go toe to toe with Steve Ashton on some of the largest delegate yield ridings. He's also going to try and capture a bunch of other smaller ridings and hope that that gives him a, uh, an advantage uh, on the first ballot. What does it all mean? Well, let's take a look at the likely outcomes that all this mathematics could uh, produce for us and to help us understand how this could play out on the first ballot March 8th. We've actually have taken all the numbers, all the numbers that I've just given you, and we're going to plug them into a very special NDP leadership computer and see what comes out. So here we go. Well, here we go. The number's hot out of our mobile NDP leadership computer. What these numbers tell me right now is that Steve Ashton is our likely first ballot uh, leader. It doesn't mean he's gonna win the leadership on the first ballot. It does mean that he's likely to have the most delegates of any of the three challengers on that first vote. What does that mean going into the second vote? Well, it means that one of Greg Selinger or Teresa Oswald is gonna be dropped off the ballot. And that's gonna be really critical because then what we have is a really, really difficult decision. Oswald and Selinger's camp, well, man, these are, we're talking about two groups of people that do not like each other. Is there any chance that if Selinger survives for a second ballot, that suddenly Oswald's supporters would go to support the premier? Pretty unlikely. On the other hand, if Oswald goes through to the second ballot, will Selinger's supporters suddenly flock to her to stop Steve Ashton from becoming premier? It's really too early to tell. The mathematics can only tell us so much at this part. We're gonna continue crunching the numbers and hopefully sometime before March 8th, we'll have a little better idea of who's got the advantage going into that vote. For the Winnipeg Free Press, I'm Dan Lett. Thank you very much.